complexometric titration. The learning objectives for this lecture is as follows. Before we start, I would like to recap on the titration method. Titration is an analytical method to determine an unknown concentration of a solution. The basic setup of a titration is as such. Known solution would be called the titrant. From our previous lecture, when you have a base and an acid with an indicator, for example, for naphthalene, this is an acid and base titration as the solution is an acid and a base. For complexometric titration, a simple metal ion is transformed into a complex ion. This is when the reaction will be completed. A simple ion will react to form a complex ion. This is when reaction is complete. The animated example is as follows. Basic setup of a titration. You have the metal ion with unknown concentration in your conical flask. And you have a reagent in the burette. When titration is started or conducted, the simple metal ion will react with the reagent producing a complex ion. This solution is called complexing agent. And the simple metal ions in the solution is called metal ions. The complexing agent is also known as ligand. When ligand becomes metal complexes, it is called complexes. Complexometric titration is important for analysis of pharmaceuticals, especially if they want to look for any metals in your drugs or in a solution. Similar to other titration methods, in titration, there will always be a proton or an electron donor or acceptor. For example, in the titration method for acid and base titration, the electron donor is a base and the acid is the electron acceptor. For complexometric titration, ligand is the electron donor and the metal ion is the electron acceptor. With this information, we know that a ligand must have at least one lone pair of electrons. For example, as such. This is an example of a ligand with four lone pairs. There are many different types of ligands or complexing agents. There is, for example, this one with one lone pair. This is called a unidentate ligand. If there is a two lone pairs, it is called a bidentate ligand. And from our previous example, with four lone pairs, it is called a multidentate ligand. These lone pairs will attract the ions in the solution.
complexing agent or a ligand when react with the metal ion and produces complexes that are water soluble this ligand in turn is called sequestering agents we want most of our complexes to be water soluble for easy disposal Most common sequestering agent is EDTA, sodium adetate ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. EDTA molecular structure is as follows. With four lone pairs. Because EDTA is the most common sequestering agent or the most common ligand used for complexometric titration, therefore, complexometric titration is often called EDTA titration. Why EDTA is the most commonly used? is because the complexes formed are stable, formation is instantaneous, the complexes formed are water-soluble, and the complexes formed are one-to-one -one ratio, means one mole of EDTA is equal to one mole of metal. This shows the general reaction of EDTA with different valency states of the metal. What I want to highlight here is the hydrogen ion that will be produced in the EDTA reactions. Why is this a concern is because when there is H plus ions, pH will increase, sorry, it will decrease during titration. When pH is decreased, it will break down the complexes. Therefore, during EDTA reactions, pH must be monitored. Metal complexes can be colorless or intensely colored as such. These metals are as follows. How do you know you have reached the end point? Detection of endpoint can be used by visual indicators. In this case, metal indicators. Metal indicators are dyes and they are metal sensitive. So it will show a color when a certain metal is present. If there is no metal, it will become colorless or it changes the color. So any color change indicates the end point. There are eight metal indicators. These eight will be used for different types of metals. And the color change will also be different. For example, calcone. It will be purple or red color, purple to red color with calcium ions. Absence of these ions will give blue color. For example, you have a solution that contains calcium ions and you add the indicator calcone and the solution will turn purple. This indicates that there are calcium ions. When you start the EDTA titration, the EDTA 
will complex with the calcium ions until the calcium ions is used up there are no more calcium ions and the color change will turn to blue this indicates that there are no more calcium ions in your solutions same with catechol violet it is used in a wide range of metals blue color will indicate there are metal ions when there when the complex somatic titration is conducted the metal ions will be used up or complex with EDTA and the color change will turn colorless. Third is the area chrome black tea. It is for metals that include magnesium, calcium, cadmium, zinc. Red color when the metal is present. After EDTA titration, color change to blue when metal is absent. Modern blue 3 is for aluminium ions. Purple when there is aluminium. After EDTA titration, it will become pink when the metal is absent. Modern red 7 for nickel ions. Bluish violet in presence of nickel. And green when the metal is absent. Murazite for calcium ions, blue violet when the calcium is present, and red violet when the metal is absent. Seventh pan is for copper ions, red color in the presence of copper, and yellow when the metal is absent. Eighth xenonol orange. For bismuth, cadmium, mercury, lead, and zinc, red color in the presence of these metals, and yellow when the metal is absent. This is a summarized table of the examples of the indicators with their respective ions, metal ions. Metal ions can also be masked and demask the masking agent are for example aluminium of uh, example one two three four five there are five masking agents with their respective metal ions for example if you want to mask copper you use thioglycerol to react with your metal solution. Thioglycerol will mask copper. So EDTA will not react with copper. We can also demask using cyanide or sorry, we can also demask using formaldehyde and acetic acid means to take out again the thioglycerol and you, now you will be able to analyze copper. This is an example of application and you will try this in the class. Thank you.